Welcome back, everybody. We are live. Well, we're not live. I don't know why I said that, but we are here. I am currently live at this very moment, but this video is not live. Uh, we are here, uh, Skip Patrol Productions, Timothy Mganowski, as always, most of the time. Um, it's funny, I just looked back for a second to see my band was made, as if you can see it. If you do happen to see it, it is, it is made. So mom, if you're watching this, I've made my bed today. Uh, I do, all the time. Uh, but anyway, that's not the point of this video. Um, the point of this video is to talk about David Geffen. Uh, if you saw my video, I think it's like two, three videos before, um, I applied to the Yale, uh, Yale School, it's not the Yale School of Drama anymore. This is the point of the video. It's the David Geffen School of Drama at Yale and um, to take my master's in playwriting. And so that's what today's video is about. A little bit about why and also about who David Geffen is. Um, if you watched my most recent video, um, then you know a little bit more about me. Uh, but David Geffen is a pretty great person in my personal opinion. Uh, I've never met the man and I don't know if I ever will. Uh, but he has donated lots of money to lots of places. Uh, one of those being the Yale School of Drama, which has now been named after him. And the donation that he made, uh, I think it was about a year ago now, um, he made a donation to the Yale School of Drama. And it what that donation did, or does, I should say, what that donation does is it gives all future students at the Yale School of Drama, which is now the David Geffen School of Drama at Yale, um, the ability to go to the School of Drama uh, tuition free. Uh, which is incredible. Um, I I don't think I can overstate how incredible that is. Um, but first, to tell you a little bit, a little bit, or I guess now it's kind of second. But first, to tell you a little bit about who David Geffen is. Now I'll let you know. I did I did not know much about him before this. I had recognized his name, but I did not know actually who he was. And I am going to be reading, which I don't normally do. I know I like to, you know just free write all my stuff and I don't like to prepare for any of these videos, but I did prepare for this one just a little bit because I didn't want to be wrong. Um, but David Geffen was uh, born in, in Brooklyn and he, as far as I know, I, mean, I know that he's Jewish, but I believe he is Jewish and Polish because I believe Geffen is Polish last name. I may be completely wrong, uh, but uh, he is Jewish and Polish, and he is also part of the queer community, uh, which he uh, revealed to the world um, in the early 2000s. And he actually went to, um, when he went to college, he um, he went to, um, let's see, I think I might actually have it right here. Do, do, do. So, so first off, to, you know, give you all some hope, he barely got out of high school with, um, with a diploma. He was barely passing the average of 66. And then he attended the University of Texas in Austin for a semester and then Brooklyn College after that before he dropped out. Um, and what's interesting about that is all of the success that he has after, which I know you can see with some of these amazing people. They, you know, went to college or didn't even go and they did poorly in school, but, you know, were amazing artists or were amazing when it comes to knowledge or something like that. Um now, something that's interesting is that David Geffen, um, I assume still does, I don't know if like, you can train yourself to be out of it, but had uh, dyslexia, and that was one of his biggest struggles. Now I have my own, you know, struggles that I have to uh, deal with when it comes to um, to school and stuff like that, um, as I'm sure many of us do. But being able to accomplish all of this stuff, I think um, the stuff that he had to go through um, assisted with that. And to give you a little bit of a rundown, I'm going to say a lot of words, and you will recognize some of them, and that is why I'm saying them as a list. Um, early on um, in the, you know, 60s or so, um, after his, like, dropping out, he went to follow his music career, you know, um, and he, he did do music himself, but he also, you know, eventually began, like, managing and producing music. And um, a lot of that began over um, with some of the um, Laurel Canyon artists. And um, so he started, here's the list of words you will recognize, but might not make much sense immediately. Um, Asylum Records in the 70s, Geffen Records in the 80s, uh, DGC in the 90s, um, eventually, uh, when it comes to movie stuff, um, 
DreamWorks, SKG, uh, Universal, and then worked with uh, Universal, uh, uh, Warner Bros, Interscope Records, uh, uh, Viacom, Paramount, uh, Disney, Universal. I might have said Universal Toys. Um, but anyway, all those words you recognize, I'm sure. If not, you know, 90% of those words. And those are all, all other things that um, he was in. A lot of the first half of that list was stuff that he was literally in charge of or founded. And then the second half was huge, amazing companies that he's worked with um, since those times. Um, and anyway, something interesting that I never knew, you know, obviously, you know, being the age that I am, I grew up with DreamWorks as a huge part of my, of my livelihood. Um, livelihood is not the right word of my entertainment. Um, and I know it was DreamWorks SKG. I never questioned what the SKG was. I never knew anything about it. I never, I, don't, I never researched it. Um, SKG stands for uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, Jeffrey uh, Katzenberg, and um, David Geffen. I had no clue what the SKG stands for stood for at the time. Um, I just found this out very recently. Um, but so he was one of the main founders of DreamWorks, and um, you know, obviously, you know, with he made so much money in the music industry, um, and you know, once DreamWorks was a thing, you know, that money grew exponentially. Um, and something that's very interesting that I want to focus on his philanthropy because um, in 2004, you know, DreamWorks prime time, if if you ask me. Um, you know, they were really getting a swing of things in the in the mid-aughts. Um, donated, uh, David Geffen donated five million of his his uh, profits um, to U the UCLA Playhouse. And he's worked with UCLA, um, donated, I think, to the School of Medicine as well. Um, but he donated five million to the UCLA Playhouse. And he, in 2004, I believe it was that same year, he um, said that any future profits that he made from that time forward, he would be donating them, whether that be to theaters or medical programs or music programs or whatever. Um, but he said, I, um, from what I've read about his philanthropy, I'm pretty sure he stuck with it. Uh, because if you, if you want to go and do the research yourself, he has donated to so many organizations. And a lot of it is so that people can continue to educate themselves without putting themselves under a mountain of debt. And the reason that I make, I'm making this video is because of that reason. Um, I loved school, you know, um, I loved when I was in school, you know, particularly college when you got to choose what you wanted to do, and what you wanted to learn. Um, and I think that's amazing. And knowledge is power. You know, that quote that, you know, teachers love to use knowledge is power. Yeah. Unfortunately, you often have to pay for knowledge. And so money is power. And David Geffen seems to be one of those people that is trying to stop that. Um, you know, he's not the richest man in the world, but he is on the list, I'm pretty sure. Um, from At least if you were to calculate all the money that he has made over the years, you know, since the 70s, let's say. Um, and so for him to be doing this, you know, there are some other very rich people that are not... Um, seemingly, from my point of view, from my personal perspective, um, that are not uh, assisting the worldwide community um, and not um, helping the countries that they're from. And so David Giffen is doing that. And the Yale program particularly um, has influenced me. Um, I've seen, you know, I've went to Yale for shows. I've seen shows at Yale Rep and their um, college theater and all that kind of stuff um, before. Um but the way that this, that David Geffen's donation to Yale is affecting me is that now all these people that could never afford to go to Yale. I mean, yeah, it's not like just like some school. Now, that would still be great to, you know, be able to go to some theater school, any theater school for free. That would still be amazing. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but to be able to go to a, a, a drama school like Yale for at no cost, you know, um, that's really incredible. You know, you have access to some of the best uh, professors. And not only that, you, the people you're going to be um, in class with are also talented. Um, you know, I'm not saying, you know, like everyone's not talented at other theater schools. But, you know, some people take theater as like electives. They're like, oh, this is easy, which like isn't true, they find out. But they do that. Well, here, you know, everyone is very passionate about theater. The Yale process is not easy. Um, 
I'm already in it a little bit. I've went to a bunch of the virtual open houses because due to the circumstances of this year. And um, I, there's a lot of work to go into the application process and I'm not done. Um, there's a multi-step interview process. There, I think there's a phone interview and then there's two in-person interviews. And even then you might not get in. Um, I think um, from my understanding last year, they did not accept any students due to um, COVID, probably also because they were figuring out the David Geffen donation. I don't know. I'm just conjecture. Um, but so they didn't accept any new students at the school drama last year. So this year, I have a feeling that most of those people probably are still going to apply, you know, maybe not all of them. But so they might have, you know, like a 50% increase of applications this year. Um, so from my understanding, I think there may be like anywhere from like 500 to like 1000 applications. Um, for the playwriting program at the school of drama if I got my correct information, which is maybe I didn't but from my understanding um, That's the quantity of people that may be applying and then after that It just keeps dwindling down and then from my current understanding I think they take like three students in the playwriting program um, Which is just insane. So it's not just like, oh, it's free, everybody, you know, come on in, you know. You still need to prove that um, you're passionate about the work and that you're going to make positive changes in the world in the future and that you're a good writer. You know, they're not just going to be like, hey, come on down, you know. Um, but it's an amazing opportunity. And part of, part of what's amazing is because now people who could never imagine affording going to Yale or even any other program, um, or can now do that, you know, and for me, that's amazing because I would love to follow my playwriting career, um, a lot like with an educational career. Um, when I was at the university of New Haven, I studied, uh, criminal justice and I studied theater. Um, and I would love to continue my education in theater. I would love to do that. You know, uh, I just don't have the money. I do. I could not possibly, if someone's like, hey, you need to go to start going to school tomorrow, you know, it's like, I, I, okay, I can't afford it. So I don't know who's paying for it. Um, I can't afford that. You know, I can't, you know, I have a full time job, not to mention, you know, playwriting itself and working security. Um, and then my full time job at the theater, you know, and I could not afford to take, to stop working and go to school, you know? Um, and not only that, but it's not like I have this like big, like sum of cash in my bank account to go to school. Um, I've looked into programs and I just can't afford it. So being able, <laughs> God, uh, being able to do this is incredible. And I hope even if I don't get it right. So I'm, I'm already proud of myself for getting so far in the process of going through the applications, going to the open houses and all that kind of stuff and speaking, um, with some of the, um, the um, per, the head of the theater of the playwriting um, degree and uh, program I should say and um, some of the current students and I'm already proud that I was there and participated in those uh, conversations and got to speak with them because even speaking with them was really cool because like I've I know who they are you know um, I I you know they're a little famous you know they're playwrights at Yale they've obviously directed written shows um, but the other thing with that is like, it really is incredible. What I'm proud of myself already. I, you know, really hope I did do a good job and I hope I do get invited to, you know, get into an interview and get invited to the second interview where they get invited to, um, be a candidate for the master's program. Um, but I'm still really happy this is happening. Even if they're like, Nope, we, we don't want you. Sorry. You just don't meet the cut. Um, Sure, you know, it'll be hard, um, but I'm still going to keep writing. It's not going to stop me from, I'm not going to say, oh, well, yeah, doesn't think I'm good. So I'm going to stop writing and, you know, just going to go do my job and go to work every day. Um, that's not what's going to happen. I'm going to continue writing no matter what. Uh, but I'm still really happy just because I, uh, you know, participated and I could apply in the future. Um, but also anybody else that it gets to help, 
you know, whether it's someone from um, another country or somebody from another state or maybe there's someone that I don't know that applied from back home, you know, maybe someone from Greenport freaking applied to go to Yale, you know. I mean, it's a small town. I think I would know um, if we had any up and, up and coming playwrights in, in Greenport. You know, there's a couple thousand people in my entire town. Um, so I think I'd probably know about that. But I'm just really happy that David Geffen has provided this opportunity for so many people you know these are people that are passionate about theater and david geffen is making that uh making that opportunity possible and probable you know because these are the type of people who are gonna put in the effort and um i'm doing my best like not to like cry from like joy that this exists because <laughs> you don't get to see this every day especially in the news you know you see these other people who have Lots of lots of money, and uh, they're spending it on uh, ridiculous things. And uh, David Geffen's trying to help the community, and trying to help the art community, uh, which is again very overlooked. Um, not to mention all the philanthropy that he's done, you know, donating to like medical programs and uh, you know that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, I'm going to end the video there. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you know a little bit more about David Geffen. I know I'm a minute over what I was expecting my limit to be. But now you know a little bit more. Uh, do some research. Get to know David Geffen. And um, I, the applications are, are closed now. I think they're closed in uh, November. Uh, but um, next year is always there. This is forever. David Geffen has donated so much money. And I assume he will in the, in the future if need be. But um, he's donated enough money that you can go to Yale School of Drama, uh, David Geffen School of Drama at Yale for free forever. Um, that's incredible. Uh, thank you all for tuning in today. Hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, please check out some other videos. Uh, better yet, check out some plays. Because I don't make these videos because like, hey, I love making YouTube videos. I make these videos because I love writing plays. Uh, so please uh, check out some of my work on here and go to New Play Exchange and check out my uh, link on there because that's where all my writing, most of my writing, some of my writing I'm still working on, uh, most of my writing is on New Play Exchange. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Peace.